Hey everybody, uh, this is Mr. MathBlog. So uh, this is a review for modules 12 and 13, sequences and series and exponential functions for IM3 class. So uh, I don't forget all your groovy lessons can be found right there at MrMathBlog.com. In fact, if we go to that real quick, here's what it will look like. And then uh, find your Integrated Math 3. So if you click that guy, I'm going to scroll down. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if it will bring my pencil up. Will it let me do that? No, it won't. So anyways, it's going to go right down below. You can't see my cursor, sorry. Down below this uh, com uh, compound interest module 13.4. Um, so we're doing it on uh, 12 and 13. That's where I'm going to be putting that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. So, um, uh, so let's go ahead and get going. So for the formulas, you guys, um, uh, for uh, series and sequences are, are um, in Module 12, the Review of Module 12, Section A. I'll go over those still with you, though. So write the explicit and recursive rules for these arithmetic uh, sequences shown. Okay, so this starts at 0, but let's pretend like it starts at 1. Okay, so if you pretend like it starts at 1 there's only one formula and this actually works for if you started at 0 just start it at 1 right here so uh, at 1 uh, the first term is 19 so if you plug in 19 right there plus d times n minus 1 that'll get us our formula and I'll show you it'll get us uh, 25 when we plug in 0 to our formula so here we go uh, just slide that up. So I'm going to plug in uh, a sub 1 equals 19 and d equals negative 6. Can you see those terms are going down? Minus 6, minus 6, 25 minus 6 is 19, minus 6 is 13, minus 6, and so on. So that's d right there. Okay, so let's plug that in, distribute the 6 through, and then combine the 19 and the and the, um, and the uh, the 6 gets us that 25. Sorry, a little brain freeze right there. So check it out, you guys. Let's plug in 0 right here. If we plugged in 0, 6 times 0 is 0, we get 25 right there. So it, it will work for both of them, just um, uh, as long as you start it at n equals 1. Okay, now the recursive, you guys. Since this series does, or uh, this sequence does start with uh, uh, my first term being 0, we got to state that first. So the first term is going to be f of 0 is going to be the 25, and then we just write this stuff. f of n equals f of n minus 1, which is the previous term, plus d, which in this case is minus 6. And we always start with n greater than that one right there. So this n right here is going to be greater than or equal to 1 right there. Okay, so there it is right there. All right. Okay, here is a geometric sequence shown. So geometric sequence, we need to figure out what is R, okay? So we're going to use a sub 1 equals um, uh, R to the n minus uh, uh, 1. So just make sure that when we use this formula, you guys, all, all we got to do is plug in, uh, make sure we start with the 48 right here. Okay, and I'll show you what we can do to make it adjust it to make it the 64 right here. Okay, so if we plug in 48 and then it's going to be r to the n minus 1, then we're going to do the 48 times um, uh, r. So let's get r by just doing uh, pick any two numbers. I like picking the smallest ones, these two guys right here. So the right number divided by the left number, 27 divided by 36 is 3 fourths. So that's what goes right here. I'll probably put it in parentheses right there. So, so um, uh, let's go ahead. And, and we get that. There's our explicit formula. Now, to make sure that we can get uh, this term right here, this 64, if I put in 64 right here, n minus 1 won't work if we plugged in 0. So what we have to do is take off the minus 1 part right there, okay? So that's what the book will probably have because they like to start off with the, the first term right there. So the first term is that n equals 0 and 64. Um, this one works okay too, though. We can use this as our first term. Okay, this is the first book I've seen in starting with zero. All the other books I've taught for 30 years have always started at one, so this book starts it at zero. So to get 64, we got to just make it just to the n power right there, okay? Because anything to the zero power is one, and so when I plug in n equals zero right there, I get one times 64 will get us that. Okay, if we plugged in n equals 1 right here, 1 minus 1 is 0, so 3 fourths to the 0 is 1 to get me this 48 right here. Okay, so either one's fine with me. Okay, so the recursive is you say f of 0 equals the first term here at 64. 
Um, and then f of n is r times f of n minus 1. Okay, so there it is. And then so remember, you guys, we always start um, with the next n value. Since f of 0 equals 64, then we got to start with the next n value right here. n is greater than or equal to 1. Oops, I didn't mean to move that. Anyways, okay, find the sum of this series. Okay, can you guys see that this is going, uh, I think it's going up here. Yeah, it's going uh, from negative 8 to 3 is plus 5, plus 5, plus 5. So D equals 5. And this is my first term right there, okay? So um, uh, we know that, okay? Here's our formula right here. So I need to know for my formula what n is. How many terms are there? We don't know that. I need to know the first term. That's this negative 8. I need to know the last term, that's this 97, divided by 2. So we just need to figure out n. Well, we use our arithmetic uh, sequence formula right here. So here we go. We're going to go uh, a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and plug in. We know what the last term is. This 97 is going to float right here for the last term. That's going to equal the first term, which is this negative 8. Um, plus 5 times n minus 1, and then we just solve for n. Okay, so there's that. Plug it all in, distribute the 5 through, and then combine like terms. So we get negative 13, so add 13 and divide, we get 22. Okay, we have everything to plug in the formula now. All right, so I like to take half if I can, and I can. I'm going to take half of 2 is 1, half of uh, 22 is 11. So this is 11. Negative 8 plus 97 is 89, so 11 times 89 is 979. Okay? All right, this one. Okay, this one you need to recognize it's going down. It's not going down the same amount unless we're multiplying. And if we multiply it by times negative a half, times negative a half, that's what r is right there. So r is negative a half right there. So the sum for, arith or for geometric is that a sub 1 here. I'll put it right here. Um, I'm sorry, it's infinite. It's infinite. Sorry, you guys. I knew that. Duh. Okay, it goes into infinity right there. Our only formula for infinity is this. It's the first term over 1 minus r. We just got to make sure that r, the absolute value of that, is less than 1. Okay, and it is. The absolute value of negative a half is positive a half. So it's just number crunching right there. Okay, so all I did is I changed uh, this 1 to this denominator, so it became 2 over 2. So minus a minus became a plus. So this is going to become 3 halves downstairs. So when we plug that downstairs, and then we're going to divide negative 16 divided by negative 3 halves. Keep flip change, KFC. So, and then we can, nothing cancels, you guys. So just go ahead and multiply across the top. So negative 16 times 2 is negative 32. 1 times 3 is 3. So negative 32 thirds, okay? All right, nothing canceled. Okay, how about this one? Okay, this one's not infinite. This is what I was thinking of. So this is where the first term times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. So let's go ahead and get started. That's the sum of this. So um, the first term times... Uh, it's the first term times 1 minus r to the nth over 1 minus r. Okay, now, n is this top number. It's 7. Now, one of my students, CJ, asked me today, shouldn't it say i equals 1? Yes, it should, but on your test, it doesn't have that option, so it just says from 1 to 7. So, yes, it should say i equals 1 all the way up to 7, but we're going to go from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. Okay, now your first term is always this number, and if you can't see that, plug in 1 right there, okay? 1 minus 1 is 0, 1 fourth to the 0 is 1, 40 times 1 is 40, so that's our first term. And this is R right here, 1 fourth, so we have everything inside of there to plug it in, so if we do that, <clears throat> excuse me, we plug that in, and then I got to do uh, the exponent now. So 1 to the 7th is 1, 4 to the 7th is a big fat number. Let's get that, okay? So um, I get uh, that right there, and I changed 1 to the common denominator. Here's 4 to the 7th, 16,384. Here's my 1, 16,384 over 16,384. Here's my 1 minus 1 fourth. So I'm just getting common denominators, okay? So 16,384 minus 1 is 16,383. Okay, so now it's going to be it's going to be this 40 times the top fraction divided by the bottom fraction. Okay, so here it is. I'm going to make it 40 over 1 times the top. Now let's keep flip change. So we're just going to flip that 3 fourths to 4 thirds. So when I do that, 
I get that. And then now here I, I can recognize you guys. Um, uh, I totally, well, let's see, does this go into this? You guys know the divisibility by, by 3? 1 plus 6 is 7. 7 plus 3 is 10. 10 plus uh, 8 is 18. Plus 3 is 21. Since 3 goes into 21, 3 goes into this number evenly. And the divisibility trick for 4 is I just look at the last two digits. Since 4 goes into 84, 4 will go into that one. So I'm just picking up a calculator, dividing it by 3 and 4, and I get that. And then I noticed in my class today this can reduce. This 40 and this 4096. I know 4 goes, in, goes into both of these, but 8 does too. 8 goes into this um, 5 times, into this 512 times. So when I do that, um, I get that. And then now we just go ahead and everything's canceled out. So now we're going to go ahead and multiply 5 times 5, 4, 6, 1. And then 1 times 5, 12 times 1 is just 5, 12. So we get that mess of an answer right there. Okay. So that's what those seven numbers would add up to because it's going from the first term to the seventh term. And that'd be hard to get common denominators with that. So the formula is way easier on this one. All right, so this one, okay. Now notice uh, at the at the end right here, it goes plus dot dot dot, which means infinity. So the only formula we have is uh, our infinite geometric right here, okay? And again, r is negative a half, just a coincidence, but since the absolute value of that is less than one, this has a sum. So what we're gonna do is do our first term. Our first term is this number over one minus r. So one minus a minus one half, so there it is. So that becomes 1 plus a half, so it's 2 halves plus 1 half is 3 halves, and then uh, keep flip change. I'm going to just do that right off the bat. The top fraction divided by the bottom fraction is the same as the top times the reciprocal of the bottom. And then the 3's cancel right there, so if you cancel those 3's, we get 2 fifths. Okay? All right, so interest formulas, uh, you're going to have some of these on here. Interest formulas that compounds annually, okay? There it is right there, okay, where V of T is the end value, T is the time in years, P is the initial investment, the initial principal, so this is talking about money, um, and then interest more than uh, once a year gives us this formula, where here V of T is still the final amount, P is still the initial amount, R is still the rate, N is the number of times that the interest is earned each year. Okay, T is the time in years. I didn't put that there, but that's what that is. So semi-annually means it's going to be N equals 2, quarterly N equals 4, monthly is 12, and daily is 365. Okay, so here we go. Rob wants to reduce a drawing. Uh, the original drawing is 30 inches long. His copier can only reduce it by 70%. So find the length of the copy after four reductions. Okay, so this one's just going to be like the, uh, the interest one right here. So um, the 1 minus R is already compensated in there with that 70% right there. So um, this 70% is what goes inside of here. So it's going to be the original uh, size times 70% to the T power. Okay, and we're going to uh, do it after four reductions, so T is our reduction rate right there. So if we plug that in the calculator, we get that, and then multiply, we get about 7.2. And it says round to the nearest hundredth. It should be 7.20. Sorry, I missed that right there. That should be a 7.20. Okay, I think it's 7.203, but to the nearest hundredth is two decimal places, so tenths, hundredths. Okay, so 7.20. All right, so a water sample in a lab initially contains 10,000 bacteria. The organism re reproduces at a rate of 9.5% per, 9 .5 per hour, so that's 0 0.095. Find the function that corresponds to this situation, and then find the population. Okay, so this is going to be 1 plus R, so we're going to, to the T power, so... So after a full day, it's going per hour. So we're going to uh, uh, put in uh, 24 hours in a full day. So that's why that exponent became 24. So we got to add 1 plus 0 0.095 and then take it to the 24th power. You get that. So I'm getting about 88,296 bacteria after a full day. Okay, all right, uh, last one, you guys. Okay, so here the principal amount of $4,200 earns 3% compounded quarterly. So this is that one we're going to use with the, uh, the R over T to the NT power thing. So how much money of this term will be used? Okay, so we're going to do the initial amount plus or times 1 plus the rate over, I think it said quarterly, so that's going to be a 4. I forgot what these numbers were. I think it said 4 and 20, I think. Well, it's quarterly is 4, I know that. 
Yeah, 20 years. Okay. So we got to do, um, let's see, I know 36 divided by 4 is 9, so 0 0.036 divided by 4 is 0 0.009, and this is going to be 80 right there. 4 times 20 is 80. Add those together and then raise that to the 80th power, and then we find out that they're going to have about $8,600.87. All right, you guys, I hope you guys do great job on, on your test coming up. Take care.